Hi, this is Jeff Challen. In this screencast, I want to take a look at the test suite for MP1. So the way that we grade your machine problems, um, including MP1, is by running a series of tests. We're using a standard Java test suite, and we've written the code that you provide us in ways to allow it to be tested. So for example, if we look at factorial.java, as we've pointed out before, there's a main method on factorial that handles getting input from the user, but then that hands off the input to a function that you have to write called factorial. Now over here in source test Java, for each of the uh, parts of assignment one, there's a separate test suite. So for factorial, I have factorial test.java. I'm gonna open that up and take a look at this. So again, this is not code that you should modify. If you do modify your test suite, then we can't guarantee that the auto grading results that you get locally will be the same as the ones that we get when we test your code on our server. Uh, because part of our testing process is to overwrite these test files with our copies to make sure that you haven't broken our test suite. So for the case of factorial, there are three different parts of the test suite. And these test suites follow a common pattern that I just wanna point out, which is it's common when testing a particular function to test it by using pre-computed values. So what we've done here is we've computed the values of factorial for one, two, four, eight, 16, and 20, which is the maximum value. And we save them in this hash map here. Um, and again, uh, the syntax and some of the constructs here that we're using in the test suite are not things that we expect you to understand yet, but this is a good example of a test suite that's following sort of um, standard best practices. So I have a list of the inputs and expected outputs, and then the way I test factorial is by walking through that list and for each um, input and expected output, calling your function, um, let's see, yeah, calling your function right here and making sure that it returns the correct answer. So if I go up here, I can choose to run as a test ng test. And what you'll see here when it finishes is that there's a pane called results of running class factorial test. And you'll see that there were, uh, there's one test that passed. So there is a short test here to make sure that the uh, maximum and minimum uh, values the class accepts haven't changed. So we're just making sure they haven't changed our constant. So that should pass, that's a sanity check. And then there are two other tests here. There's a test for valid inputs. Um, and then there's also a test for invalid inputs. Um, so the valid inputs test tests to make sure that your function will compute factorial properly given the range of inputs that are expected. And test invalid inputs test to make sure that your function will return the invalid result in cases where it's given an input that is out of range. So both of those are failing right now, and that's not surprising because uh, factorial is unimplemented. So as you implement these functions, the test suites will begin, uh, be begin to pass. Let's look quickly at the test suite for Quizmaster. So again, this is pretty similar in the sense that I have a series of pre-computed answers, which are a combination of zip codes and the, um, whether or not each answer was correct. And then I have a score that I've computed ahead of time that corresponds to the right answer for that particular set of scores. And I'm going to check. Um, Quizmaster has only one test uh, part of the test suite, which is it just goes through that list and makes sure that for each one of our pre-computed inputs, uh, your function is returning the correct answer. So let's see. I'll run this as Quizmaster test. Oh, no, it's not going to like that. I think that's... So let's see here. Run as test ng test. And you can see again that the, all the test suites are failing currently because I have not implemented the function that Quizmaster needs to compute the score. Last but not least, I have the test suite for the winner program. Uh, this test suite, again, has a series of inputs and outputs. So if the three scores are 0, 1, and 2, then one valid return is 2, 1, 0, again, separated by commas. So these are... Um, these are provided to your code, and we check to make sure that, that your code is, is re returning the correct result. So again, this is sort of a pretty uh, classic design pattern where I try to test a range of inputs by computing some of them offline in cases where I know what to expect. And then I feed those in and, and check to make sure that they're correct.
And it's also good to try to find cases where, you know, I might not be doing the right thing. So for example, we use some negative values in winter tests to make sure that you handle that case properly.